thing. We said there were a few people in there. Um, we know that there are a few barriers to entry, sort of that few gray area line. But, you know, anyways, let's jump in and let's try to solve this question. So what is a characteristic of an oligopoly? Okay, characteristic of oligopoly. One, a formidable, formidable barriers to entry. What does formidable mean? So break down the word. If you don't understand the word, um, my suggestion is thinking, well, what could they say? What else could they say about barriers to entry? They could say a few barriers to entry, right? Formidable barriers to entry or a lot maximum barriers to entry, right? So formidable basically means somewhere in the middle. Uh, for now, I think it's pretty true, right? There are certain barriers to entry, otherwise it'll turn into perfect competition. So oligopoly is sort of in the middle of that monopoly and uh, perfect competition, right? Price equals MR. This is a very key characteristic of perfect competition, right? When you have P equaling MR, we know that we're in a perfect, you know, we're in a perfect competitive market competitive market right so we know that that's true so well this is not perfect competition this is actually an oligopoly so nope definitely not true see we are uh, they have relatively relatively few sellers that's sort of true, right? I mean, oligopoly, if you think about it, right, we talked about the concentration ratio. We said, well, uh, if four firms or, or less have greater than 40% market share, right, we call that an oligopoly, right? We call that an oligopoly. So it's true. I mean, there are a few sellers. So C to me sort of looks true. Well, now um, is the tricky part. So it said A and C only. So A and C only. Yeah, that's true. A and C both are correct. Or B and C only. Well, C is true, but B isn't. So this is not true. It, e isn't true. So, in fact, the answer is D. This is one of those things where people will combine. Well, they'll say one and two only, two and three only, three and four only. So make sure you pay attention. Okay, make sure you pay attention. And you're looking at the right one, and you're saying that hey, you know, if both are true, this is one of the reasons why we ask you guys to go ahead and look at all the answers. Okay. Um, one of the other things my, my teacher always used to tell me is that gut instinct is always true. So uh, more than often than not, if you guys are changing answers and whatnot, generally it's uh, changing for the wrong thing. But again and again, check your answers then and again. Check it all the time so it's good for you. But one of the key things I advise you guys to is actually look at all the answers. Okay, And um, you can cover it up. One of the things I like to do personally is that if I say, what's a characteristic of an oligopoly, I cover them up and I say, well, um, I'm thinking to myself, the answers are, uh, well, there are a couple of barriers to entry. There are a couple of sellers. I know the concentration ratio. So list the facts that you know, okay, separately, right, on a separate page. So you just know, you just scribble some notes and you look at it because oftentimes people design tests so that when you look at the answers, you get confused a little bit, okay? So be careful about just glancing at the answers immediately, okay? So have some sort of an answer coming into the question so that when you know, you're not actually distracted by it. My another other piece of advice that I always am, am reiterating again is saying just looking at different questions, looking at different answers and making sure you're not leaving them out. For instance, if I just say, hey, you know what, I know for sure A is true, let me mark A, well, you're wrong because D in fact has another, includes another right answer, which is C, right? Just another example, all right? So make sure you pay attention to all of these. Make sure you understand the difference between oligopoly, monopoly, monopolistic competition, and perfectly competitive industry, all right? The next one we'll come up with is a characteristic of uh, Monopoly itself. All right. So with that, we'll see you guys in the next question. Hey guys, this is the um, one of the last questions that we're going to go over for um, microeconomics, and we're trying to differentiate and making sure that you guys understand the difference between perfectly competitive industry, which is what we started off with, then we went off to monopolistic competition. Then we moved on to oligopoly and now finally in, in monopoly. Why is it important to know these differentiations? Because people are going to test you on these and they want to know the subtle differences that are existing between these. So when you have a cheat sheet or something like that right, right before the day of the test or whatever it is, if you just look at it and review it, don't take that cheat sheet to class. Okay, don't do that. That'd be all bad. So make sure that you, know, you review all your materials right in front. So if you create some sort of cheat sheet for yourself for the day before, you can just glance at it the night before and then that just remembers in your head and the day of the test. You don't have to refer to anything but your mind. You just go in there and then you can get the answers. All right. So um, understand that uh, one of the best ways to prepare for anything is just, you know, if you just create a review sheet for everything, right, and the night before or two days before, if you just review it, 
it'll just be easy for you. Okay. Again, you can't take anything to the test um, in terms of uh, materials. It's not an open uh, note test by any means. Okay. So uh, going over, this is a characteristic of a monopoly. Okay. So typically we have the same thing. We have we said, well, if it's a check mark for sure, you know that's the answer. X for sure, if you know, don't know, if you think that's not the answer, and question mark if you're somewhere in the middle. Okay. So again, characteristic of monopoly. You said one of the few ways to think about it is right off the bat when you see the question. Okay, so this is asking what's the characteristic of a monopoly. When you see the question, I want you guys to come in and say, hey, you know what, before I'm going to look at the answers, I, I, I think I have an idea what the answer is going to be. Okay, so scribbled notes real quick on the side. So just in case, you know, just characteristic of monopoly um, on the side, I know for sure that there's uh, uh, one big firm that controls the market. One big firm. What else do I know? Well, the barriers to entry is extremely high, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be a monopoly, right? Barriers to entry are high, right? Uh, next, what else do I know? Well, I know that uh, product differentiation, highly differentiated, right? Product differentiation. Uh, not really that true because it's only a single firm offering a product, but obviously very differentiated. Um, what else do we know? Monopoly, well, I know that actually the price is not equal to marginal revenue, okay? Um, so these are the couple things that I know going in, okay? And of course I know things about perfect competition and other things like that, so if I see something that reminds me of perfect competition, I know it's not a monopoly. So I, I just create this cheat sheet. It takes me about five seconds. You know, again, practice your time. This is why we want you guys to practice, right? So that you understand at the end of the day that okay, I'm, I'm taking some extra time on multiple choice. I need to be faster in working through my questions. Okay. So just having this will make sure that whatever trick answers they give you, you kind of stay away from it. Okay. So let's look at this. Uh, characteristic of a monopoly, they want to know only one answer. There's no A and B, C and D only, so that's fantastic. So let's look at the first one. Weak barriers to entry. Totally not true, right? If there were weak barriers to entry, this would not be a monopoly. This would be a perfect competition, right? So I know for a fact A is not true because remember, I had my little cheat sheet and I said barriers to entry are extremely high. So I know for a fact that's not true because that'd be perfect competition. P equals MR, also I know this is not true because P equals MR only in a perfect competition. Right? So I know, well, for a fact that's not true. Perfectly elastic demand curve. Is that really right? I mean, when I draw a uh, demand curve for MR, does it really look elastic? Um, well, actually, uh, yeah, does it really look elastic like that? Excuse me? That's an inelastic one. No, it doesn't, right? It doesn't look an inelastic. Or it doesn't look elastic. It sort of looks more inelastic. All right, so I know that's not true. Perfectly demand curve, not true. What about D? Single firm in industry, ah, completely agree. Well, that's what makes a monopoly, right? They're a monopoly, mono, meaning one, right? They're a monopoly because they're the firm in the industry. And finally, zero economic profits. Well, if we, why would it be a monopoly with zero economic profits, right? Zero econ profits agree in, are in a monopolistic competition, right? Or in a perfect competition, right? So for a fact, this is not true. So I know the answer has to be D, right? So these are the ways that you will be using your techniques uh, to uh, understand and crack the multiple choice part. Again, there's 60 questions. It's worth 60% of your grade or more. So make sure you pay attention. Practice well, um, and you should be doing well. Pick up as many sources as you can, guys. Pick up as many books as you can. Uh, really speaking, at the end of the day, standardized tests are designed so that if you can practice tests well, you'll do better. So really, I've said this a lot of times, but practice, 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 it's the key. So no matter how much you know of the material, at the end of the day, if you don't practice your test, timing can be off. You might know all the material, but if you don't practice the test, you might be not keep up with the pace of it, okay? So make sure you can um, practice multiple choice and both for response. From myself, I wish all of you good luck on the test, and I hope that all of you get a five on the test, and as long as you practice and study, I'm sure that every one of you can get a five. Thank you so much for listening to me with all these lessons, and I wish you all good luck on the test. Thank you.